Welcome back to Only One Stories. My name is Bonnie and today I'm going to be telling you another terrible story and we're going to be watching an interrogation video together. This is all about the story of Colonel Russell Williams. I don't know about you, but I am very interested in watching police interrogation videos, especially when they either manage to get the criminal to uh, confess or if they, you know, when they, when you can pinpoint down the I gotcha moment in the videos. So this particular case is so bizarre and twisted, but it's also such a good interrogation that, that they do. So this is all about Colonel Russell Williams. One of the really interesting things about this particular criminal is that he was the head of the Canadian Armed Forces. He had a really successful 23 year career in the Canadian military as a really, really high ranking pilot, but he was living this double life and he was like this psychotic murderer pervert at the exact same time. So even though he had this really, you know, successful career and he was happily married um, and everything seemed to be going fine, he had this compulsion to steal women's underwear and take photographs of himself posing in the underwear, doing other really creepy things. That's how it started out. So in about 2007 was when he actually started to steal uh, lingerie and underwear from his neighbors usually. He st ended up stealing like well over a thousand items of clothing, most of it underwear. And he took thousands of photographs of himself wearing these clothes. Then in 2008, he sort of upped the ante and he started to break into people's houses and being a little bit more bold, he would sometimes leave notes at the crime scene. He would say, you know, merci, which is thank you, uh, after stealing some underwear, or he'd say, I've seen better. Just different th creepy things to bother the victims. And then he started to actually break in and tie up women. So the crimes escalated and two women in Tweed were attacked in September of 2009. So they started to call this criminal that they hadn't figured out who it was yet. They called him the Tweed Creeper. And he, in both cases, the women were asleep when he broke into their home. They were bound and blindfolded and he forced them to pose for nude photos. And November the 23rd, 2009 was when he committed his first murder. This was in the town just west of Trenton. And Colonel Williams, Russ, he broke into the home of Corporal Marie Francis Como, Como, who was actually under his command. Apparently she put up a fight and he hit her several times with a flashlight on the head. And over the next two hours, he assaulted her, beating her really viciously. And he recorded all of it on video, took a lot of photographs, and he ended up asphyxiating her with tape. He wrapped her, her face and her head with duct tape, and that's how she ultimately passed away. He wrapped her body in a duvet and left it in her bedroom where it lay undiscovered for more than 30 hours until her boyfriend eventually discovered, discovered her. Then later, because Marie France was actually under his command, um, William sent condolences to her father. Then at around 1 a.m. on January the 29th, so only a couple of months later, Williams murdered his second victim, Jessica Lloyd. So he noticed that she was alone. He had broken in to confirm that she lived alone. And then he went into her, into her bedroom while she was asleep and he hit her over the head and cracked her head open. He tied her up and blindfolded her with duct tape, took a ton of creepy photos of her and throughout the entire assault that lasted hours, videotaped him assaulting her until around 2 a.m. The attack lasted hours and then he took her into his vehicle. He, he actually drove her to his own house and then he forced her to take a shower. He allowed her to sleep for a few hours. She woke up and then she had a seizure. Uh, he buried her in a shallow grave. Jessica didn't show up for work, so they went to her home and her car was there, but she was not there. So they ended up launching this huge search. They couldn't find her, um, but they connected this murder with the murder of Como. They did find some tire tracks and some footprints near Lloyd's home. The way that they actually caught Russell Williams 
was interesting because they had the tread of the tire tracks. So on February 4th of 2010, Russell Williams was stopped on the highway at like a checkpoint and they appeared to be looking for drunk drivers, but they were actually looking and examining tires because they had a very distinctive tire tread pattern that they were looking for and they saw that his car matched. And so they were, they started to be suspicious, but then they put him under surveillance. They ended up taking him into the interrogation room and that's what we're gonna be watching today, the interrogation where he actually confesses. This is the interrogation that happened on February the 7th, 2010. And I've sped up, it's going to be at 1.25 playback speed. This interrogation ended up being, I think over nine, maybe 10 hours long. And this is just a portion of the entire interrogation. So let's take a look as I fold some laundry. Sorry, I got some work to do here. I will try my best not to be too interruptive, but you know, I got stuff to say, so we'll see. Here we go. You just have a seat there, Russell. The guy was speaking with my, whatever night that was, was for us as well. Oh, yeah. And took, uh, took every number I had. Yeah, now they were uh, doing some pretty thorough interviews that night. Yeah, so. absolutely. It was right. good. Yeah. Um, just got to move the gloves here. That's a little microphone, just yeah. to make sure there's nice and clear. Um, as you can see here, everything in this room is uh, videotaped and audio taped. Check. Uh, you ever been interviewed by the police in a, in a room like this before? I have or? never been interviewed like this. Oh, no? Okay. No. Let's get this up here. Look at him smiling. Interviewed by NIS for top secret So things. cocky. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, again, Russell, I appreciate you coming in uh, an investigation like this. I mean, I'm sure you can appreciate it. it's been big news, uh, especially yeah. down uh, Belleville Way. Um, and, you know, obviously our approach to cases like this is that uh, uh, we don't give up on somebody being alive until mm -hmm. we get evidence that they're not. So um, because of that, we're treating uh, Jessica's case uh, as an emergent situation, obviously. Um, so we're, we're fast-forwarding things that we might normally take our time with, mm -hmm. um, and that's why uh, we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Sure. So, uh, again, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, so... I, I'm not one to, you know, shame people's looks. Don't you think his hair's a little bit weird, though, the balding pattern? Very distracting. Okay, play. We're going to do a pretty thorough interview today, okay? okay? Um, and the reason for that is because uh, the last thing we want is to be calling people back again and again and again, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over a number of things, and uh, I'm going to explain what all those are to you, okay? okay? Um, I'm a big coffee guy. I don't know if you're a... A coffee guy or not, but I didn't want to drink in front of you, so. No, I appreciate um, that. All right, go ahead. I could uh, definitely, are they black? Yeah, they're just black with uh, with sugar. Um, I'm definitely going to take them away. I just throw them in there, so I'll probably have it a little bit. Sorry, do you want to say? Gum. Just oh, okay. Piece, piece of gum. <laughs> well, there's napkins there if you want to toss it over. I appreciate that. All right, and again, um, like I said, this interview is going to be very thorough. Mm -hmm. um, but again, uh, I have a simple rule when I talk to people. It's uh, I'm sure you're the same way. I treat people, everybody with respect. I don't yeah. want to ask you to do the same for me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by uh, going through um, what your rights are, okay? okay? Just like everybody else, okay? okay. Um, have you ever been read your rights before? No. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you've seen on TV a whole bunch of times, right. but that's usually the American version. So okay. I'll go over with you briefly, okay? Mm -hmm. um, basically in Canada, uh, as you know, I'm sure, is uh, we all have uh, our rights guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Okay, I'm just going to okay. fast forward the now, rights, uh, reading Russell, the just rights. To avoid any um, but what we want to make people clear on is that uh, if you have been spoken to by any person in authority or any police officer about any of those cases, um, I don't want what they may have said to you to... Uh, um, make you feel influenced or compelled to say anything to me today, okay? Whatever you might have felt influenced or compelled to say to them earlier, mm -hmm. you don't have to repeat it to me and you don't have to say anything further, okay? okay. But obviously what you do say, you know, for the third time is being yeah. recorded, right? So, um, Understood. These first two attacks uh, happened uh, not that far from my place in two evil. The second one did. Yeah. We didn't even know the first one had happened, but uh, I understand that was reasonably close as well, but the second one was uh, was very close. Yeah. So certainly at the time, the OPP did a door-to-door. Uh, -door. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, probably the same night, so I spoke with a couple guys then. Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm aware of that from uh, looking at the different cases. And essentially, uh, Russell, uh, in a nutshell, that's what we wanted to, uh, to talk to you about, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, those four cases are of uh, concern to us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you've kind of uh, almost hit the nail on the head about uh, some of our issues that kind of uh, make us want to talk to, to Russell Williams, okay? Because mm -hmm. um, essentially, uh, there's a, a, a connection um, between you and, uh, and all four of those cases. Would you agree? Geographically, and then I guess or I drive past. Uh, of course. Yes, I, I would yeah. say there's a, a connection. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's why um, I'll be quite frank with you. That's why uh, things kind of um, uh, evolved when uh, the officers talked to you on Thursday night. Okay. Uh, we kind of went from there because uh, when I think you discussed with them the fact that you were a, uh, a colonel yeah. uh, at the base. I was um, in uniform at the time, so. Yeah, so pretty obvious, right? Yeah. Um, so essentially, uh, then the connection with Miss Como um, yeah. was made, um, and I believe you're. Uh, a door or two down from one of those two uh, incidents uh, in Tweed. 
three doors down yet. Yeah. yeah. Very close, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So uh, those are some of the issues we want to discuss with you. Yeah. Okay. So they must be connecting the two murders with some other of those those, those two attacks um, in Tweed that they were calling them the Tweed Creeper. So they've connected, they managed to connect those murders to the incidences where the guy, him, um, broke in and burglarized, tied up the women, took nude photos, but didn't murder them, and then these are the next two murders. So that's the four that they're talking about. Okay. Three is to uh, your arrival in the, uh, in the base in Trenton. When did you start working there? Friday on the day I was, um, hmm. Thinking about how to say this. Friday on the day I was at home most of the time. Most of the day I had a sort of a stomach flu. Okay. In Ottawa or Tweed? In Tweed. In Tweed? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we backtrack then. So all day Friday you're at home. Yep. And then w what time do you leave to go to the base to sleep there on the Friday night? Um, I'm not sure. Probably just you know went in for just before bed. Uh, so I probably left tweet at between eight and nine or so. Okay. Um, and you get to the base and spend the evening there and get up for the five thirty. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So we backtrack from there. Um, you when did you arrive at your home uh, at the cottage? Can, I want to. I want to get confused between your home in Ottawa and the home. Yeah. Tweed, so um, no, I had been in Tweed all week. Yeah. Uh, the week prior now. Um, yeah, I think that's the case. I was in Tweed all week, flew Saturday, headed to Ottawa Saturday night. Okay. So um, if you didn't have the stomach flu on the Friday, what was your schedule that day? Eight, really. Okay. Um, what would have been my schedule? Just a standard schedule in the office. Okay. So uh, office brief in the morning, a couple, uh, couple of meetings. I can't remember what the specifics uh, were going to be. Okay. So um, Thursday night you slept at Tweed or you... Yep. All right. And what did you do Thursday during the day? Thursday during the day, I was at the base again. Um, I think it was a fairly standard day. I can't recall exactly, but uh, yeah, nothing. I was not flying, so I was at the base. So I would have gone in early in the morning, back in the evening again. Okay. Do you remember what time you left the base that night? Mm, I don't remember anything peculiar, so I would say. Uh, I don't know, probably seven to nine, somewhere in that range. Okay. And that's when you, you left? Left the base, yeah. And what it was that's a 45 minute transit. So. 45 minutes home? Yeah. Okay. okay. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to walk you through November, but I'm going to take you to a date that's probably pretty fresh in your mind, uh, uh, the day that, uh, that Marie Franz uh, called yeah. me. Um, do you remember how you found out? I uh, do. Yeah, I was sent an email. Um, well, as soon as the, uh, the off staff in the base learned, they told me. Okay. So I got an email. I can't remember if it was late at night or early in the morning. It was certainly, I saw it. Uh, I want to say first thing in the morning because I had just come back from Ottawa. I was in Ottawa for uh, um, a set of meetings on one of the days. I can't remember what, what day of the week we're talking about, but uh, yeah, no, I mean, obviously when your people get skilled, it uh, gets your attention. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I very much remember that coming. And how did you know Marie Franz Coleman? I only met her once. Um, she was on a crew uh, I was on uh, just after I got to the base. Okay. So uh, I can't even remember. I think it was a one-day trip. Uh, I did a number of trips uh, in Canada, transporting um, our um, you know, troops sort of first leg out of Edmonton. Uh, you know, we tend to hopscotch them across uh, until they get into theater. So and, anyway, I, I can't remember which trip it was, but uh, we did a number of them out to Edmonton just to, to pick up the troops, bring them to Trenton, and then uh, put a fresh crew on and because uh, we fly them back in the same day, so pushing the edge of that. And, uh, fresh crew on, they continue on after a couple hour delay. Okay. Do you know uh, roughly when that happened? That we were on the same crew? At the time you met her, the one time there, yeah? It was soon after I got to the base, so uh, I, I don't remember exactly, but I would say in the first couple of months, so August, September. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, you got that email notifying you that something happened. Yeah. Uh, do you have uh, any kind of a, a clear recollection as to how your schedule was going that week? Well, I can't remember what, again, what day that uh, the message came in. Just a second. Um, No, I can't remember what day, day of the week, but I, um, I'm just thinking there was a whole bunch of activity uh, spun up as a result, obviously. No, I can't remember the day of the week. Um, I'm just trying to think through the news reports I read. No, I, I'm sorry, I can't remember what day that was, but uh, 
what I what we learned after the fact was that the um, the MPs had learnt uh, of her death. I think quite a bit after her body had been discovered. Okay. So. Okay. So I think, if I remember correctly, the MPs learned late that evening. I can't remember when, obviously, her, her body was discovered. It's probably in the news reports. But uh, so they learned, and then they passed it to ops. That they need, so they immediately passed it to me. Okay. The MPs work for the wing operations officer, so they go you know, through their chain of command, and then as soon as the, uh, the duty launch officer had that information, she advised me. Okay. Um, so again, that that along particular with, week. Along with some others. Right. Right. I'm sure it's right like wildfire. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, so that particular week, uh, do you have any recollection? Well, for instance, when you got the email, uh, yeah. Do you remember where you were? I was at home tweet. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you remember if that was a week that you were um, reasonably stable in Trenton, or had you flown? No, I had been in Ottawa. I had been in Ottawa earlier in the week uh, for some meetings over in uh, in Gatineau for one of the um, actually for the C seventeen acquisition. I was project director and when I was here in Ottawa for that, so just some follow up stuff for that. Okay. So I had been here um, at some point in that week again. I can't remember how the days all fell together, but. Um, I seem to remember that I got this word shortly after having come back from Ottawa. It seems to me it was the same week. So if we were to, uh, to you know, do a, a similar uh, investigation in your background, is there, is there anything you can think of that anybody may have misinterpreted or anything uh, in your history that somebody might say Russell Williams uh, Absolutely. did this? No. Okay. It would be very boring. What's that? It will be very boring. <laughs> All right. Because essentially that's what I'm looking at. Is it? Uh, um, uh, you, you seem like a very intelligent person, and I think you can see how um, a surprise like that would uh, certainly set off some alarm bells in the investigation, yeah. right? Okay. Um, so the next thing we need to cover off is, uh, well, I'll just ask you this straight out. Uh, given the types of crimes we're investigating, uh, do you get much chance to uh, to watch television shows, CSI, things like that? I do watch, uh, I prefer Law & Order, but I Day do watch fine. CSI occasionally, yes. Okay. So you have an idea of, obviously, the forensic capabilities, things like mm -hmm. that are out there. What would you be willing to give me today to help me um, move past you in this investigation? What uh, What do you need? Well, um, would you be willing to supply things like fingerprints, blood samples, sure. things like that? Yeah. Okay. Um, footwear impressions? Yeah. This guy's such an idiot. He is wearing the boots that he used to commit the murder. And so the footprints that they actually tracked in the murder, he is wearing those boots today to the police station so that's why he looked down he paused for a second he's like sure okay. now we have a process we have to go through to do that okay um and for the blood sample uh, i don't take the blood sample we have specially trained officers that are trained to do that okay uh, i'm going to step out and make sure they're still available can i assume you're going to be discreet that's possible yeah because uh you know this would have a very significant impact on the base if they thought you thought I did this. You should have thought well, of that uh, before Bob you Russell, did that's this. Well, that's one of the reasons we're here on a Sunday afternoon. Okay. Um, uh, the uh, the military would certainly be of great assistance for, to us, especially mm -hmm. in relation to Ms. Como's investigation. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's certainly one of the things that went into our decision to, to give you a call at home today and see if we could deal with this today. Okay. So, okay. Um, He's sweating. Is this tough to undo the rumor mill once it gets started? But I appreciate that. Now that you've had some time to, I, mean, I know we've been throwing a lot of things at you here, but now you've had some time to, to think about things. Um, is there anything uh, that you're concerned about uh, that buckle swab matching in any of those four residences? Um, no. Is there, I guess, let me explain you what I'm getting at here, Russell, okay? Um, this is a significant investigation, as you can, yep. as you can well imagine. Yep. Um, that, uh, that DNA is going to be uh, significant in our investigation, both, uh, you know, quite possibly to help you, quite possibly to help us. Understood. I don't know yet, I don't know what the result is yet. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll go back to the example I gave you because it's a very similar uh, issue, I think. Um, and you talked about the idea of discretion here. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you talked about the idea that uh, um, you know. You, well, I think hopefully you appreciate the fact of how we approached you here. Yeah, um, And essentially, uh, we have no issues with that. Okay, um, we, we talked recently about you know the whole idea of any unusual sex acts in your history. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing that can often happen in cases like this is that people um, become concerned about. Uh, um, things like extramarital affairs, mm. uh, indiscretions along those lines. Mm. Um, is there any contact that you may have had with any of those four women um, that you may not want your wife to be aware of? Anything like that that we should know about to try and uh, explain why 
if if your DNA is found, it will help us understand why it may be there. Absolutely not. Can you think of any reason um, why we would find your DNA in any other residences? Yeah. Let's let's focus on well, for instance, uh, oops, I believe. Let me just check the name there. Make sure I've got the right address. Talking about the house that was just uh, a couple of doors down from you there in uh, in Tweed. A couple um, of doors down was yeah. Lori. I don't know her last name. I don't know. Mazzacotti. I don't even know what her last name is, but. Uh, there's a, the, the woman down the road, three doors down, was, yep. her name is Lori. I don't know her last name. All right, let me just make sure we're on the same page here. Okay. Uh, my understanding is she lived at 76 Cozy Cove. Yeah, so she would be the one, the second one, uh, the second incident on your on your road there. Yeah. A couple of doors down. Ever been in her house? No. We met her once, I think the first summer um, we were there, so in 04. Okay. And that's what I'm getting at. I, I, again, this is a credibility issue, right? Yeah. Because I don't want to come and see you two weeks from now and say, you know, Russ, uh, yeah. our CSI people in that house. And uh, are you familiar with how C, uh, DNA works? I think broadly, yes. I okay. guess. Um, one of the challenges we have in 2010 with DNA is it's become so uh, precise that um, I guess the best way to explain it is I can think back 15 years ago when I started in, uh, in violent crime investigation. Yeah. Um, for us to get a DNA match, the sample we had to find was, um, you know, probably would have filled half of one of these cups, okay. you know, because they destroy so much of the uh, the sample in the in the testing. Okay. Um, essentially, DNA has become more and more precise to the point where, when you and I walked in this room earlier today, mm -hmm. uh, we could have sat down, talked for 30 seconds, yeah. walked out. CSI officer could have come in three, four days from now, yeah. did some swabs here, and he would have found your DNA and my DNA, mm -hmm. and probably a lot of other people's DNA. Sure. Um, a little bit gross to think about, but essentially, uh, you know, as we talk, um, we, you know, a little bit of aspirate comes out of our mouth yeah, no, that uh, that contains our DNA, our blood, or uh, our skin cells contain our DNA, yeah. and that's what I'm getting at. If you were ever in Lori's residence, uh, quite possibly, quite innocently, your DNA could be uh, in that residence. Has there ever been a time you've been in there? No. Okay. Um, what about the other lady down the road? On uh, I hadn't even heard that so name. So cocky. No, I don't. I don't actually know who that was. Okay. Have you ever vi visited uh, uh, Marie Franz Como at her residence? No. All right, um, so you're quite positive there would be no reason why your DNA would be in any Absolutely. of those three locations. Okay. Um, did you know Jessica Lloyd even in passing for any reason? No, I didn't hear, hear her name until it was on the news. Okay. And the reason I'm asking that uh, is because um, I know you were asked that question on Thursday night, and sometimes what we find, and again, this is one of those situations that can sometimes cause us to get in a lengthy investigation as somebody that mm -hmm. maybe doesn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. uh, but what, what can happen sometimes is they, you know, somebody gets stopped by the police like you did, and they, uh, they get asked that question, and people when they're stopped by the police, they can be nervous, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so they blurt out an answer, and then they start driving away, and they go, oh, why'd I do that? Because the problem is, is that once they uh, get asked again, then they feel compelled to maintain that answer for fear that if they change their answer, yeah. somebody could find it. You understand what I'm saying? I do. Okay. So I want to make sure that's not happening here. I don't care what you said to the officers on Thursday night mm -hmm. last week. Um, if there's any uh, communication or contact between you and Jessica Lloyd, you've seen her picture, right, around yeah. town? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Ever seen her before? I don't. No, I would say I have not. Okay. All right. All right. And you mentioned something about uh, doing some renovations at your uh, at your property in Tweed there. Um, I think you said something earlier about tearing up carpet. Correct me if I'm wrong. But oh, yeah. Okay. When did all that happen? In 2004 or five. Okay. Any recent uh, renovations? No. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure I'm covering all the bases here. Um, How tires do you have on your Pathfinder? I think um, I think they're Toyo. Okay. Do you know the brand name or sorry the uh, I think make? Is a, um, I don't. Remember. Sorry, the, the make is Toyo. Yeah. I don't know the model. Okay. Just see if I'll read this off to you. See if it rings a bell. Ever heard of uh, does Toyo Open Country HTS? That sounds make any sense. Yeah. Okay. When did you have those tires put on your Pathfinder? Well, it's the second version we've had of them, so uh, I think it might have been this past fall. They replaced other ones we'd had on the same. I would never well, know Toyota, my tire type. Say that they're the same, exactly the same model, but uh, our dealership here in Ottawa says they're very popular for the Pathfinders. So okay. They never get. They last a long time. All right. Um, I've had to. I think you were talking about the the whole idea of the MPs uh, helping us with our investigations. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, you have the same system as we do at our headquarters with the swipe cards. 
Um, one of the things uh, one of our investigators did is they made a call while I was talking to you there um, because we were trying to work through that week of the, uh, the 23rd of November. Okay. Um, 23rd being the Monday, uh, 24th being the Tuesday. Okay. Um, what, what, they've, what they've told us is that, um, and I want to make sure I get this right, is that uh, on the 23rd, uh, your swipe card was being used at the base. Okay. Okay. Uh, on Tuesday, 24th, there was no use of your swipe card. Okay. okay? And then on the, uh, the following days, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, there is what appeared to be average activity of your yep. swipe card base. Does that make sense to you? It does. That, that says that I was in Ottawa on the Tuesday. Okay. Do you remember where uh, in Ottawa you were? Yeah, I was in Gatineau with, uh, as I said, meeting about the uh, C-17. Okay. Um, now, again, I want to be fair to you here, but we're going back two months. Yep. Um, are you sure that would have been the, uh, the day you were in Ottawa? Well, only because I wasn't at the base. Okay. So I, I can't remember, honestly, that that's the day I had the meeting in Ottawa, but uh, if I wasn't at the base, it was because I was here. Okay. Now, if that is the day you had a meeting in Ottawa, um, do you remember being at the base on the Monday, uh, the 23rd, and swiping your card in and out, do you remember what you would have done that evening to, to, to get to Ottawa for that meeting? Like, would it be... Uh... I drove to Ottawa in the morning of the day of my meeting, so if it was the Tuesday, then I would have left uh, Tweed. It was a very foggy morning okay. uh, that morning, and I drove in that morning. Okay. So I would not have been at the base uh, the day I was in Ottawa, because the meeting started at 8.30 or something. Okay, so you leave the base, you would have went home to, to your residence in Tweed? Yep. And then you left Tweed in the morning and drove up to your meeting in Ottawa? Yep. Okay. Um, you leave the, the meeting in Ottawa, is a daytime meeting, evening meeting, or do you remember? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a daytime meeting, finished, I don't know, mid-afternoon or so. Okay. We had lunch and then uh, finished, I think uh, my wife and I had dinner, because she was here for work, and then I headed back. Okay. Um, well, that's, these are the kind of things I'm trying to draw out here. That's helpful to us. Um, do you remember where you had dinner? <laughs> uh, well, I don't remember exactly the restaurant, but it was in Westboro because that's where our house was being built at the time. So we had dinner, you know, in a restaurant that we would expect to be able to frequent uh, once the house was finished. Okay. Remember how you paid? Uh, one of us would have paid by MasterCard. Yeah. Okay. Are, are you sure about that? Or Pretty sure. That's normally how we, uh, okay. we pay for meals. All right. I can't and remember and if it was me or my wife that paid, but one of us. Okay. And do you remember which restaurant it was again? No. Okay. All right. And you see what I'm getting at, right? I mean, th that can be very helpful for us because yeah. if we can track yeah. uh, that issue, right? Uh, right? We can we can put somebody paying for a, a meal at a, at a location. Well, I was meeting with uh, you know 15 people or so that day. So. Okay. And what time did the meeting end? I would say between three and four. Okay. And um, are you sure that that's the same day you went out with your wife? Well, I think so. Yeah, because she was here, and uh, I, I think that was the day we went to this restaurant in Westbury, yes. Okay. Um, you finished dinner, and do you remember what you did that evening? I would have driven back to Tweed. Okay. And you would have... Now, again, I, I know we're talking two months ago here, but do you yeah. remember specifically having dinner and then driving back to Tweed, or uh, do you remember... Uh, are you just guessing here? No, I'm not really guessing. I mean, I, I believe that this night at this restaurant was following the meetings in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And I you know, kissed my wife goodbye and headed back to Tweet to okay. go to work the next day. Okay. Um, all right. The, uh, the tires that you have on your truck, right, the reason I asked you about that is there, is there any time, I mean, uh, you recall uh, where you were stopped um, by the officers there? Yes. Okay. Did they explain to you what the significance so of that was? That was their house. That was their house. Yeah. Okay. So you remember that location? Yep. Yeah. Do you remember what the crossroad was? Or I don't think there was a crossroad. It was sort of just uh, on the south end of 37. Okay. Um, when you get stopped at that location, has there been a time in the recent uh, one or two weeks that uh, your vehicle has uh, left that road for any reason whatsoever? Have you driven into a field with your vehicle at all um, for any reason you can think of? No. Okay. Because um, I want you to rack your brain here. This is important. So yeah, yeah. Is there anything you can remember doing that, uh, you know, would have caused you to, to uh, drive off the road no. at that section of the roadway? No. That's my early... That's the significance of these tire tracks is that they found the tracks in the field near Jennifer Lloyd's home um, and the footprints with the boots that he's wearing and they match his vehicle, but he he must know that at this point. I'm not sure why he doesn't just say, oh yeah, I might've turned around in that field, it's near my home or make up an excuse because he's just denying that he has any involvement and that's, that. I don't know, anyways. Roadway. No, that's my early, uh, that's the early part of the highway and I'm just heading north, it's about 30 minutes from there to uh, uh, probably 20 from there to my house. Okay. Um, would it surprise you to know that uh, when the CSI officers were uh, looking around uh, her property uh, that they identified um, a set of tire tracks 
uh, to the north of her property. Um, looks as if the vehicle left the road mm -hmm. and uh, drove along the north tree line of, of uh, Jessica Lloyd's property. Okay. Okay. Um, they took, uh, they examined those tire tracks mm -hmm. and uh, they ha have contacts in the tire business. Obviously, mm -hmm. tire tracks mm -hmm. are a major source of uh, evidence for us. Sure. Um, shortly after um, this investigation started, they identified those tires as the same uh, tires on your Pathfinder. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. One of the other uh, one of the other things that they do to try and identify the type of vehicle that may have left those tires, mm -hmm. well, is they do two things. They, they talk to witnesses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there was a, uh, a female police officer that actually drove by that location uh, that evening mm -hmm. and recalls seeing an SUV type vehicle in the field up to the north of Jessica Lloyd's house, uh, consistent with a, a Pathfinder. Okay. Yeah. It could maybe consistent with other things, but consistent yeah. with a Pathfinder. Um, and they, uh, what they also do to try and identify the type of the vehicle is they look at uh, what they call the wheelbase width, mm -hmm. okay? Because different vehicles, different makes models have wheelbase width. So yeah. they can take those two sets of tire tracks, measure the distance between them, yeah. okay, and determine what the uh, the width is, sure. and then they can enter that into a vehicle database, and it will spit out the types of vehicles, yeah. okay? Um, your Pathfinder's uh, wheelbase width is very, very close to the width of the uh, of the tires uh, that were left in that field, mm -hmm. okay? Um, do you have any recollection at all of being off that road? No, it was not off the road, no. Okay. All right. Russell, um, is there anything you can think of? Let's go talk about Marie France Como for a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. Is there any reason at all you can think of that during our investigation, obviously we're searching uh, computers, uh, uh, things like Blackberries, right? Mm -hmm. Electronic devices, uh, looking through houses for things that are in handwriting, written notes, diaries, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I'm not at liberty to tell you what the content was, but is there any reason at all you can think of why Marie France Como would have specifically referenced you in some of her, uh, in some of her writings? No, absolutely not. Okay. Is there anything that she ever said to you that led you to believe that there might be something uh, more than a passing interest with her towards you? Not at all. No, we spent, you know, one flight together talking. I'd go back occasionally and talk. No, I, I, if that's the case, that's, a, that's very surprising. Um, you have any questions for me right now? No. Okay. I'm just going to step out and see how things are going. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is a Sunday, but there's probably 60, 70 people working on this file, so there's a mm -hmm. lot of things happening. Sure. Uh, so let me go out and see what's happening, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back in and uh, we'll hopefully continue. Okay? okay. I told you when I came in here uh, that I'm going to treat you with respect, and I've asked you to do the same for me. Um, we talked about the whole idea of how we've uh, uh, approached you here. Okay. Uh, the, the trying to be as discreet as possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the problem is, Russell, is every time I walk out of this room, there's another issue that comes up, okay? And it's not issues that point away from you, it's issues that point at you, okay? And I want I want you to see what I mean, mm -hmm. all right? This is the footwear impression of the person who approached the rear of Jessica Lloyd's house mm -hmm. on the evening of the 28th and 29th of January, yep. okay? All right, now I want you to keep in mind that this is slightly smaller, okay, in scale. Okay. Okay. All right. That's not to scale. That's the footwear is actually bigger. Okay. If you look here on the ruler, you'll see that uh, one inch is just slightly smaller than an actual inch. Okay. okay. But this is the way it prints off on the computer. Yeah. I'll move this over so you can see what I mean. All right. Because essentially, when you're dealing with footwear impressions, um, we have a gentleman on the OPP who's uh, basically world renowned. Uh, his name is John Norman. Mm -hmm. And essentially, with footwear impressions, uh, you're in a situation where you're you're pretty much in the area of uh, of fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Okay. And essentially, what we're talking about here is, especially when you start adding in other pieces of, of uh, information that mm -hmm. uh, support uh, an investigative position. Yeah. Okay. This is a photocopy of the boot that uh, you took off your foot yeah. just a little while ago. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm not an expert in footwear impressions, so I rely on the experts. Footwear impressions are very much like uh, like fingerprint comparisons. Okay. You take a look at this print, and again, this is one print. This mm -hmm. person walked through, there's several different prints to compare. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get features off of one print to compare, features off of another print to compare. Yep. These are identical. He knows. Okay. Your vehicle drove up the side of Jessica Lloyd's house. Your boots walked to the back of Jessica Lloyd's house on the evening of the 28th and 29th of January. Okay. You want discretion. We need to have some honesty. Okay? He's been caught. Because this is, this is getting out of control really fast, Russell. Okay, really, really fast. Hmm. What, what are you going to do? You've been caught. 
this is getting beyond my control. All right, I came in here a few hours ago and I called you the way I called you today because I wanted to give you the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. But you and I both know you were at Jessica Lloyd's house and I need to know why. You've been caught, buddy. What are you gonna say? I don't know what to say. It's, uh, well, you need to explain it because this is the other problem we're having, Russell. Okay? Again, these decisions are made by me. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a search warrant being executed at your residence in Ottawa. Okay? So your wife now knows what's going on. There's a search warrant being executed at the, your residence in Tweed, and your vehicle's been seized. Okay? You and I both know they're going to find evidence that links you to these situations. Okay. You and I both know that the unknown offender male on Marie France Como's body is going to be matched to you quite possibly before the evening's over. Okay. This is a major investigation. The Center of Forensic Sciences on call 24 hours a day helping us with this. Mm -hmm. Your opportunity to take some control here and to have some explanation that anybody is going to believe is quickly expiring. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're applying, the investigators now applying for a warrant to search your office. Everyone's These aren't decisions know. that we can say yes or no to. This is a practical steps mm -hmm. in an investigation like this. And Russell, Listen to me for a second, okay? When that evidence comes in, when that DNA match, when that phone rings and somebody knocks on this door, mm -hmm. your credibility is gone, okay? Because this is how credibility works, all right? And I know you're an intelligent person and you probably don't need to hear this explanation, but I also know your mind's racing right now, okay? Because I've sat across a lot of people in your position over the years, mm -hmm. okay? The bottom line is, is that as soon as we get that, that piece of evidence that solidifies it, mm -hmm. DNA, okay? As soon as the expert, and footwear impressions, the expert in tire impressions calls and says, yes, I've examined those and they're mm -hmm. a match. Mm -hmm. It's all over. Because as soon as that happens, where's your credibility? Where's your believability? You're just another, uh, and again, don't take this wrong, okay? But you can see if you step outside this room in your mind and imagine how people are going to view you, okay? If the truth comes out after the clear evidence is presented to you, when you finally go, okay, I'm screwed now, mm. what are we going to do? Russell, you know there's only one option. What do you, what do you, what other option is there? What's the option? Well, it's I like don't think you want do? the cold-blooded psychopath option. I might be wrong. Because okay, don't get me wrong, I've met guys who actually kind of enjoyed the notoriety, got off on it, got off on having that label, Bernardo being one of them. I don't see that in you. If I saw that in you, I wouldn't be back in here talking to you, quite frankly. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you got me fooled. I don't know. This is over. And you can have a, a bad ending where Jessica's parents continue to wonder where her daughter's lying. They haven't found her body yet. And I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's a huge search still underway, and it'll continue. It'll continue until her body's found. That might even happen tonight, for all I know. Once that happens, then I don't know what other cards you would have to play. So what are we going to do? What? 
are you gonna do? Russell. What are we gonna do? Call me Russ, please. Call me Russ. What are we gonna do, Russ? Jessica somewhere we can find her easily? Like, is this something where I can make a call and tell somebody to go to a location and they're going to find her, or is this something where we have to go and, and uh, take a walk? direction are we heading in here? Speak. Russ, maybe, maybe this would help. Can you tell me what the issue is you're struggling with? What's the issue you're struggling with? They're so patient. It's hard to believe this is happening. Why is that? You ruined your life. Why is it hard to believe? It's just, it's just hard to believe. Sure. What's that? So you talk about perception. My only two immediate concerns from a perception perspective are what my wife must be going through right now. Yeah. And the impact this is going to have on the Canadian forces. Where do we go? Russ, is there anything you want from me? Is there anything you want me to explain? Is there something missing that you're struggling with that I can... Shed some light on for you. I'm struggling with how upset my life is right now. Russ, what are you looking for? I'm concerned that they're tearing apart my wife's brand new house. So am I. But if nobody tells them what's there and what's not, they don't have any choice. This investigation will end up costing no less than $10 million. 
easy. And they will say no to nothing. Any request this major case manager makes on this case, they've already been told it's approved. Don't even bother asking. So what am I doing, Russ? I put my best foot forward here for you, but I really have. I don't, I don't know what else to do to, to make, make you understand the impact of what's happening here. Did we talk? I want to um, minimize the impact on my wife. So do I. So how do we do that? Well, we start by telling the truth. That would be a start. Um, is she close to where she lives? I've got maps of that general area. Which town is she near? Why don't we start there? I'm not sure if you give me a map of um, that covers Caligar down to the highway and over to Tweed in the south. I'll show you. Let me see what I got here. I might have something. Is she inside, outside? So now is the point that the investigator knows he's 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 going to confess. He's now admitted. He knows where the dead body is. It's all over from now. I mean, we know that, but he's decided he has to at least cooperate with this part so he can have, I don't know, less impact on his wife. He should have thought of that before. How long has she been there for? over a week. Was it fairly quick from the time she left? Friday night. Friday night? Yep. So where was she between Thursday night and Friday night? In Tweed. With you? Yep. How long was she alive for? Almost 24 hours, not quite. Okay. Russ, you're doing the right thing here. Well, again, my interest is in uh, making my, my wife's life a little easier. And okay. her family as well. well. We share that interest. But there's no, uh, your time in Ottawa is wasted, really. I'll tell you where the memory cards are. Where are they? They're in the house there, but... In Ottawa? Yeah. Whereabouts? Um, some in the camera bag, which they would have found in my office. Mm -hmm. And in the, when you walk into the office on the left side, there's a... Um, uh, desk of uh, drawers, set okay. of drawers, like a filing cabinet, wooden, Ikea, in one of the top two drawers and there's a plastic divider. Yeah. And there's, uh, inside there, there are two memory cards. Memory cards. Okay. Which are blank, but I'm sure they can be really, uh, And whose images are on those cards? Uh, well, uh, I've erased them, but I expect uh, you'll be able to draw images of uh, Jessica and I. What about Marie? There may be images on there as well. And the two women from September? Yep. 
Okay. Do you have those images stored anywhere else? Yeah, there are um, two hard drives in the house in Ottawa. I can draw you a little picture of that. Sure. Do you want to do that now while I'm sure. getting them out? Okay. Do you want anything to eat or anything? Do that with you. Okay. Why don't we start with Jessica? How does that start for you? Um, I saw her in her house on her treadmill. Wednesday night, I guess. And I noticed she wasn't um, there Thursday. So I got into the house, look around. Then. Um, and they left. Noticed she'd come home. So I went back in. Through the uh, back patio door. While she was uh, sleeping. Okay. So I woke her up. Didn't, um, didn't hit her. She only hit her once. Friday night. Okay. Well, so I raped her in, uh, in her house. And I took her to the car and took her to Tweet. And um, spent the day in Tweet. And then I hit her um, as we were walking. She thought we were leaving. Hit her on the back of the head. Okay. Uh, anything particular? Well, um, what did the hit on the back of the head do? Well, I was surprised that uh, her her skull gave way. She was there and immediately unconscious. Uh, I strangled her. Okay. What did you hit her with? Flashlight. Okay. In the house or outside the house? In the house. Yeah, I'll find uh, signs of that. Where in the house did this happen? In the main portion, just in front of the fireplace. What do you mean they'll find signs of it? Oh, there's quite a bit of blood I hadn't expected. I would expected to knock her out. Obviously generated a lot of blood. What did she bleed onto? The floor. It's just a tile floor. Okay. Did you clean it up or did you? I, I wiped it up. I know it'll be uh, easily spotted. Why well, makes you think that? Like, if I walked in that house right well, now, would, would I see it? You wouldn't see it, not at all, but, uh, you know, all right, science will, uh, will show it, I'm sure. Okay. Luminol. Um, so when that happened, was she, did she have clothes on or was she naked? Yeah, she was dressed. So when we find her, is she going to have those clothes on too? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, okay. Uh, Marie France uh, Como. There was an open window in the basement of her uh, her house when she was away. I went in there um, a couple of nights before uh, she came home. Looked around. I went back in there uh, late at night when she was at home. She was on the phone in her bedroom. She 
she actually discovered me in the basement. She was trying to get her cat to come upstairs, and the cat was in the basement, had seen me, and was fixated on me in the corner. She couldn't get the cat up, so uh, she came downstairs trying to get the cat, and uh, I'm not more sure why she uh, came over to me. I guess the cat was staring at me, and she was wondering what the cat was staring at. That's so scary. That's wrong. So when she spotted me, I um, had the same flashlight. I subdued her. Tied her up. Got upstairs. And uh, strangled her later in the morning. Well, more suffocated her. Right. Some tape. Left her there. How did you subdue her? When you say subdued her in the basement, what did you do? Well, I had the same flashlight. And, um, you know, was, she... She saw me right away, so I was just uh, hit her a couple of times and around her head, trying to knock her out. Didn't, but um, she was bleeding a little bit. And eventually, her um, struggle subdued her. Okay. Any blood from from that struggle? Oh yeah, no, not not a whole bunch, but uh, a flashlight. Did break her skin a couple of times. Okay. What area of the basement did that take place in? I was hiding behind the furnace, so she spotted me right there. Okay. Did she recognize you? No, I had uh, stuff on my face. Okay. Um, so you go upstairs, and you said uh, she suffocated? Well, I suck her. I put tape on her. Uh, I put tape on her mouth, and then I put tape on her uh, nose and held it there so she couldn't breathe. Okay. Um, what kind of tape was it? Duct tape. What happened to it? Uh, well, I took it with me and. Uh, I can't remember what actually I did with that tape, but uh, probably threw it in the garbage. Did you use tape for any other purposes? No. Okay. Um, did she ever recognize you through this whole episode? No. What did you say you had on your face? I had just a, a cover for my head, just a you know, a sports you know, pullover tape. Like just a little cap kind of thing? Okay. Just a, I think, you know, a, a hat? Like her or something. And they, um, just a headband over my nose and mouth. So it covered most everything but my eyes. Okay. Um, now this flashlight, where is that now? In Tweed. In the house? Yeah. What kind of flashlight is it? It's a red uh, 3 double D. Um, I'm not sure what brand it is, but it's an. Why would you keep it? I don't remember what brand. You know, aircraft women. Flashlights that's already still around. Anyway, it's a big, bigger one of those. Um, did you take anything out of uh, Marie Francis' house or Jessica Lloyd's house? Uh, yeah, some of their uh, underwear. Okay, that's all. And where is that? Um, it's in some boxes in the basement here in Ottawa, in that rick room. So we just moved in, so there are boxes everywhere. So on the same side as the furnace room, sort of the back against the wall. Okay. What do the other boxes look like? Um, I think one's a scanner, the box for my scanner. Mm -hmm. 
they're they're all right next to each other. So a quick look through the boxes there. Okay. How much underwear is in those boxes? Um, know, probably sixty pieces or something. All women's. Yeah, sixty pieces of theirs. Of whose? Of Jessica's and uh, Mary Charles. Sixty. So you took sixty pieces from between the two of them. Yeah. Okay. It's a All right. Um, and they're in a, like when you talk about a scanner, is it a computer scanner box? Well, a computer scanner is up in the office, and its box is down in the basement. So okay. it's inside that box. Does any of the underwear in those boxes belong to anyone other than Marie Franz or uh, or Jessica? Um, yeah, there's some from each of the other two women. Okay. Uh, why don't we talk about those two women? Mm -hmm. um, so the first one happened on the 16th, and I don't know why. I can't recall their names, but uh, the lady that was uh, lived closer to you. No, Lori was closer to me. Okay. So the first, uh, the first one, mm -hmm. I had just spotted her from our boat, actually. And I got into the house while she was uh, asleep. Noticed that she was alone. And um, just hit her with my hand while she was sleeping. Subdued her. Mostly just my weight on top of her. Um, had her take off her pajamas. Took some pictures. Took some of her underwear and left. The other woman? Same kind of deal. Went in through the back of the house. She was sleeping in her, um, not in her bedroom, but in her, you know, in front of the TV. Very much the same story. Anything different about that story? I mean, pretty much the same story, exactly the same story, or two different things, right? Yeah, no, uh, not much different at all. Um, I did have the flashlight. At that time, I had her with a flashlight. Didn't think it would knock her out. Did so, and I subdued her with my weight. Took off her clothes, took some pictures, and left. Why do you think these things happen? Have you spent much time thinking about that? About why? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know the answers. Hmm. And I'm pretty sure the answers don't matter. Well, let me let me ask you this: Did you like or dislike these women? I didn't know any of them. Okay. I had met Maddie Thomas that one time in that in our uh, airplane. Okay. No, I guess when, yeah, when you're going through these things, um, are you? Well, well, let me let's talk about Jessica because she was there with you for the whole day, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of feelings were you experiencing while you were with her that day? Oh, she's a very nice girl. Can you tell me why you killed her? Right. Do you know why you killed her? Well, I think I killed her because I knew that uh, her story would be recognized. Her story would be recognized? How do you mean? Well, because she knew I was taking pictures. Mm-hmm. So because of the um, two uh, stories in Tweed, that would have been a fairly, yeah, 
and quite obvious. So if you didn't take pictures, what would you have done with her? I don't know. I mean, she's at your house, right? Um, well, let, let me ask you this. Is it uh, two lived, right, and two died? What's, what was the difference in your mind between? Well, the, uh, the attention the first two got um, was very much fo focused on, obviously, or for obvious reasons, uh, the pictures I took. So anybody else telling stories about pictures, right, would have been a fairly straight line. But when when this thing happened with Marie France, there was was did you believe that you were already a suspect for what happened in Sweet? No. So what what were you concerned about? Well, because um, I was pretty sure that uh, you know that she was serving military, right? Mm -hmm. Would have been, uh, it would have been difficult for investigators to ignore that connection. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Um, well, let's go back to Jessica then. Okay. Um, you see her on the Wednesday night. Okay. On her treadmill. Mm -hmm. How do you see her? She was in the basement, window wide open, on her treadmill. So I drove by. Okay. Did you, did you stop to look at the house, or how, how does that catch your eye as you drive by? Well, I was looking to see who was, who was where. Don't know that area very well, so I was just keeping my eyes open. Okay. So you spot her on the Wednesday? Yeah. Um, do you just keep on going, or did you stop and take a closer look that no. night or anything? No. Okay. No. Okay. And you went back on the Thursday night, right? Yeah. So you go back on the Thursday night and you went you went into the house before she came home? <coughs> yeah, she was out. Okay. Um yeah, she was out. Got in through the kitchen window. It's unlocked, everything else was locked. There's way more to the invest that that interrogation video. It is hours and hours long, but he just goes through and asks more questions, uh, more details about the the crimes. And he was charged with the two first degree murders, as well as breaking and entering, forcible confinement, some assaults, different sexual assaults of women, home invasions. There were so many charges. And on October 22nd, 2010, he was sentenced to two concurrent life imprisonment sentences with no consideration for of parole for 25 years. He had to go on suicide watch because he attempted to take his own life while in prison and then he went on a hunger strike, but he's still there serving his time. Such a creep. Honestly, I think that if he wasn't caught when he was, he would have gone on to be like the Golden State Killer and just continued to get more and more aggressive and just become like a really prolific serial killer. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching Only One Stories. If you have any case suggestions, um, anything to do with true crime or just any interesting story, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much. I'll see you next time.